Jeff be remiss if he didn't ask about Alex Len coming back to an area he's pretty familiar with. He's gotten quite a few more minutes, kind of eased himself back in the rotation the last couple of weeks. What have you seen from him? Where's his progress at? Well, you know, he got off to a slow start, obviously, with the foot yeah. uh, injury. Um, you know, and then it was a, a matter of trying to go a couple of days without feeling the pain, then a week without feeling it. And, uh, I think finally now it's, it feels good. We're, you know, we've been able to put him out there, and, and he's played well. You know, he takes up space. Uh, you know, we're, we're not using him right now in, in terms of a you know, throw it to him in the post type deal, but we want him to play defense and, and have an effect on the game that way. And he's done a nice job when he's gotten in there. To, to be, I guess, basically just a reserve five, six minutes a game early on in the season, if he was lucky, how much does that deal with his confidence as well? How much does he have to get past the mental hurdles of the injury and then come to play at a level where he's not familiar with? Well, I think all young guys go through that. They're all stars in college. They're all the main, the main dog usually, and uh, uh, then they come in the NBA, and you're playing with guys that have you know, been in the league for a while. And so, yeah, some of them maybe get the playing time, uh, but a lot of them don't. And they, they're just part of uh, the growing process and learning the game. There's, you know, there's a lot to learn. You know, not only uh, uh, knowing other players from other teams, or really know their tendencies. Uh, you know, you have practice, you have all this travel. You know, in college they play what one game a, a week on the road. Now you might be on, uh, you know, a road trip where you're gone for uh, you know eight, ten days. So, you know, all those things are adjustments for young kids, and uh, you know, it usually takes them a few years to get used to all that stuff. And uh, you know, Alex is just going through that process now. Is it is it more than just getting him an experience now that you really need him against bigger teams? Well, yeah, you know. Uh, uh, we, we have the option of putting Channing at the five, uh, so that gives us a, a different wrinkle we can use. But, uh, you know, if we're playing these big teams, Alex comes into play. You know, he's a big kid. He's strong. He's not afraid to bang anybody. Um, so, you know, that's probably when he comes into play more. When, uh, it seems like a lot of the teams now have smaller uh, smaller fours, uh, and they, they move one big to the five spot. So there's not a lot of opportunity for two bigs to play at the same time. Uh, especially on our team with what we have, but um, you know, there's we tell all our guys be ready at any time. You, know, you might be on the bench for five straight games, all of a sudden things aren't going well. We'll, we'll get you in there, see if you can give us a spark. So they all have to be ready. Coming to the end of your first season, how's this all been for you? Uh, well, so far, so good. Um, you know, it's uh, games come by uh, at you quickly. Uh, you know, the, the constant watching of the tape and all that and trying to get ready for the next game. Uh, you know, got a great coaching staff and uh, guys, it's an adjustment, but uh, one that we've been able to, to figure out. And you know, we got great players too in terms of uh, not having to push them every night to, to give full effort and do that on their own. Uh, you know, probably all season long, there's probably only been five to ten times when we've had to really get on them yell at them or whatever just to get them going but uh, you know that's great as a coach to have uh, not have to do that every single game. I know you're concentrating on the matter at hand but your Cyclones have a pretty big game coming up on Friday. Any thoughts about their chances against UConn? Well you know they uh, obviously without the one guy uh, uh, makes it tougher but you know Fred gets those guys to play they play kind of that NBA style uh, you know Fred's familiar with it and you know they spread the court and and they got guys that can penetrate, guys that got, have guys that can shoot. So, you know, they're fun to watch. They put points on the board, and they think I got a great opportunity. Now, your college coach, Johnny Orr, passed away back in December. What sort of an imprint did his legacy leave on you, especially as you're becoming a new NBA head coach? Well, you know, Coach Orr gave me, uh, you know, the opportunity at Iowa State to play. And, um, you know, he was a, he was a coach that uh, he was probably the ultimate player's coach. You know, when you go out there, he wanted you to just play and, and play hard and have fun. And, you know, he made the game fun, uh, you know, for, for the guys. And, and that's why I think every guy that ever played for him, you know, that's what, that, that, that's what they remember. They remember, hey, you know, the, the times playing basketball, which, you know, yes, it's especially at the NBA level, it may be a job, but really it's, it's a game. It's a game that uh, you love to play and love to have fun. And, you know, that's what he uh uh, he stressed and got the most out of his guys. You remember your Sweet 16 appearance? Any anything in particular from then? Or yeah, you know, uh, the, uh, it was kind of a frustrating one because we lost to North Carolina State and they had three NBA guys on the team and uh, uh, you know, we didn't play very well. Lost a close game, but uh, you know, 
we, we were all hoping that we'd win that game because then we'd get to play Kansas, who we had some good success during the regular season, and uh, to have a chance to go in the Final Four. But just like anything else, you, if you don't win that one, you don't get that opportunity, and that, that's what happened. Do you see any recovery time in the schedule? Because even, even when you go home, it's a stop and then back out. Yeah, I think uh, <clears throat> starting a few weeks ago, we only had uh, uh, twice the rest of the season where we had two days off in between games. Mm -hmm. uh, and usually though, that's the two times, both were when we're coming off of back-to-back, so we weren't going to practice. So, um, you know, it's it's all games now. <laughs> you know, there's not a lot of practice time. And uh, at this point, the guys really know what to do. Um, it's just a matter of them having the proper rest and the, the mentality that, hey, every game counts and we, we need to go out there for all 48 minutes. It seems like your best defensive efforts have come after you got to go over things in a practice per day. Though. Well, <laughs> it's always that way. I think with teams, you know, when you can reiterate some, some things and kind of go over your rotations again, and, and we try to do it on tape, uh, you know, we'll do it as shoot-arounds, that kind of stuff. But when you have a good hard practice, uh, sometimes that gets you back doing it. And, uh, we did have one of those. It uh, wasn't long, but it was hard. I think it was last week, and since then we've been doing a little bit better. And I got to ask you, when you were a player, you had that thing at the free throw line, brushing your hair to your to the side. I think you are saying hi to your that's kids. Miles. I did <laughs> Okay. Oh, that's it. Your face. But do you have any signals like that to say hi to your kids, you know, as a coach on, a, on the sideline, or is that – no, plan day thing. No, you know, that was when they were little, they wanted uh, me to wave on TV to them, so uh, you know, that's what we came up with, but uh, you know, now that now that they're a little older, they don't uh, I call them on the phone after the game, and I read their texts yeah. after the game, coach, you should have done this, why did you do that? No. Do you have um, Marcus and Marquis on your team? Have you had a hard time telling them apart without their jerseys on? Because I know no, they go out of their way to yeah, look identical. No, it always helps when they have their uh, practice jerseys or game jerseys on. I know uh, uh, I can go by the 15 and the 11, but uh, when they're apart, sometimes at first glance going, okay, which one is that? But uh, now that's almost the year's over, uh, starting to get a pretty good idea which one's which. Have they ever switched it up on you? No. No? Never? <laughs> you only had a four month, but what was March like? Four time. Oh, I thought it was great. Um, you know, the, the one thing we... we plan on going to the season having him as our, our center. And so, uh, you know, all the things we talked about, uh, him rolling to the basket and uh, talking to him about where he likes to get the ball, uh, you know, he's, a, he's a, a good player. And, uh, you know, this, the, the, I guess the point of where we were as a team uh, made sense probably for us uh, to get younger, it made sense for him to get with a team that had a great chance of making the playoffs, and I think it's worked, uh, worked well both ways. In terms of his personality, you know, like, you know, what was it like just in terms of life? No, he, he, he was great. Uh, you know, he's uh, uh, likes to have fun, you know, and he's a uh, good guy that way. And so I think the guys were, were able, all able to relate to him. Uh, just we didn't have him all that long with, you know, we had a lot of new guys too. So, um, you know, the guys that, that were here in the past years uh, got along with him great.